I got myself in a big mess organizing all of these templates. Uh, these are templates that were sent to me by a gentleman by the name of Bob Gowland in England. He's had access to many of the oldest clubs and he's made tracings of the club. So he would take a club and uh, put it put it down like this, put a pencil mark around around it on a piece of paper and then do it do it on a to get the uh, uh, top tracing and the sole tracing so we get three tracings uh, top sole and um, hockey stick or front view so this this is the most one of the most famous club makers Hugh Philp and I, I want to sh show the difference in size of some of these clubs so Hugh Philp's club is is here this is a club from the 18th century, so the 1700s. Look at the difference in size of the sole of the club. And when we look at the difference in size here on the top of the club, it's pretty dramatic. So these are these are more like weapons, I guess. These older clubs. These are these Phillips are fine instruments. Now, so these are all 1700s clubs. I'm getting those organized. These are various makers, not maybe as well known. Bennett Lang was a great club maker who uh, would, was known to copy clubs uh, with great fidelity, uh, especially a lot of the Hugh Philp clubs. In fact, uh, my, my friend Kelly Leonard, who makes clubs up in Canada, he uh, made, just made one of these clubs recently, and he thinks that that club uh, may be uh, the one that was just auctioned off on Jeff Ellis's auction. So if you see his, auction, his latest auction, there's a Bennett Lang club uh, that looks like a Hugh Philp club, and um, we think it might be that. There aren't that many Bennett Lang clubs around. Actually, here's another one here. But... Um, so anyway, let me show you these. These are, uh, this is a bag of the Troon Clubs. Troon Clubs are clubs that were found in um, in Hull, England, actually. Uh, not in, uh, not at Troon, but the clubs were eventually housed at Troon, and now they're at the Golf Museum, at the uh, RNA, RNA Golf Museum. Uh, but look at the size difference here. This is the the front view, just a tremendous difference in size, and the shape is completely different. So these clubs are probably from the uh, 1600s or 1700s. It's hard to know exactly, um, but there was a newspaper from the 1700s when they found these in a wall. Um, so they're, pro they're at least from the 1700s or earlier. But you can see the size difference and the shape difference. The nose of the club is just uh, pointed here. So these were more like bludgeoning instruments than um, golf clubs. So Phil just really took out what was not needed and just concentrated all the weight and all of the, the, the head is just concentrated behind that ball. So probably much more effective for the feathery ball. Now when we get to the gutta percha balls, they, those were rock hard. And they tended to break these gracile, you know, very, very um, thin clubs. So they had to go back and make the clubs a little bulkier again with uh, higher faces, uh, maybe not quite as long uh, lengths. So here are a bunch of templates from Hugh Philp. And Philp had, Philp's clubs, especially his putters, were highly sought after. And, uh, you can see the beautiful shape here. Now compare that. Let's see if we can find a McEwen. These are all McEwen templates here. Let's see. Um, a typical McEwen had kind of a flatter um, edge to it. It didn't it didn't round over quite as much. But not always. There were, you know, four four or five generations of McEwens making clubs. But the older McEwens tended to have this kind of flat section. I'm trying to see if I can find one. Uh, so this one's more filpian, I guess, rounded over. Um, but if you do see one with a flat, flat
flat side to it, it's uh, maybe more likely to be a felt. Like here, it doesn't, this one you see, it doesn't round over quite as much as the, a lot of the felt clubs do. But even some of the felt clubs are kind of flat sometimes. So you can't tell, uh, really. Um, you got to look at the name stamp and make sure the name stamp isn't a fake either. So I've been making uh, these clubs. Uh, I've been mostly concentrated on the um, late feather ball era, early got a percha era. So this is a Philp style. This is in the style of Hugh Philp, long spoon. And we got uh, these are Tom Morris putters that I've made. These are presentation putters. Uh, this is perhaps a club from Hendrew Dixon. Um, and it th th could be uh, around 1800. It could be a lot older. It's hard to know. Um, we, we don't even know if it's... Um, it just marked A.D. And there was a famous ball maker named Andrew Dixon. And he could have also been a club maker. There's some controversy on that. But um, we'll let the historians duke that out. This is a club that uh, my friend Kelly Leonard uh, had actually sent uh, to me. Um, it's a Thomas Manzi club, and we both uh, made versions of this. Um, and you can see the nice thing about this. Look at the how this curves. Where the toe comes down, the and you got this kind of high spot in the middle. Let's see if we can appreciate that. See how, how the toe dips? Compared to, let's see if we got, like, um, this and this Kosser doesn't do that. This is a Simon Kosser. doesn't dip quite as much. Now, this is a, the Kosser is a, a short club compared to, let's say, the McEwen. And we think it might be a juvenile club. But I ended up packing a lot of weight back there. So this is from... Uh, around 1800, and Kosser is one of the first ones to um, actually uh, put his name stamp on there. It might not be too clear, but he put his name uh, parallel to the face of the club. So I did that with my stamp. And here's uh, here's some templates from McEwen. James McEwen was the first McEwen to make clubs in the late 1700s. And it's hard to know with the McEwens because they the stamps were very similar, except in the beginning when uh, James McEwen would put a J on his stamp. But uh, this is the club I made here. This is a play club, I believe. Yeah, I think it was a play club. So we got that. And, uh, yeah, so I've just been stamping them to, to kind of remember what I did. Uh, I didn't keep great records. I was just kind of busy making the clubs, but I think I got a, I got uh, a lot of the ones that I was confused about. Um, so I'll get these templates back in, back organized and in their bags, and uh, we'll make some more clubs soon.